Peter from Samsung, and he's going to show us uh, dual Android on a Nexus 10 running on top of Xen. Yes. And go ahead. So, a mobile operating system, what it requires? Yes. Okay. So, a mobile operating system uh, requirements are quite different. Uh, basically, the human interface that goes with the device is of uh, higher importance. Uh, the touch, the user uh, input, has to be more responsive, so that the customer uh, does not feel that okay, the virtualization is not hampering the performance. So the basic challenge for getting a virtualization solution to a commercial grade device is all about getting the user interface uh, to the right uh, solution. So our main research area has been to get the virtualized GPU running and check the performance, how it compares to the native device. So uh, over the last two years, uh, we have been working uh, on Nexus 10, which was the first Cortex A15 based device that came out in market that supported virtualization extensions. So as you see, the Nexus 10 device, it, it's based on Samsung Exynos 5250. It has uh, a dual core Cortex A15 with virtualization extension, and it has a Mali T604 as the GPU. And the memory that's available is 2, G of, 2 GB of RAM, which was pretty high in, in early 2000, in late uh, 2010, early 2011. And the resolution is massive. It's 2560 cross 1504. And the amount of GPU throughput that has to go through for such a resolution and the bandwidth that's required is quite high. So if we could get a, a decent performance of a virtual GPU on such a device, we would be able to get to a commercial grade device uh, to, to, to some extent. So that was the basic idea when we started off. So today's my presentation would focus on what we did and what are the challenges that we faced in getting a, a virtual GPU on a Cortex A15 based solution with virtualization extensions. So let's start off. What, what is the configuration of the device? Uh, so if you are familiar with Zen, uh, you might be knowing DOM0 is the primary OS which does control and configuration. So to make our life easier, we got the DOM0 to run a full-fledged Android. And DOM U is the second Android, which is uh, a completely virtual uh, uh, Android uh, running a virtual CPU. Even DOM0 runs a virtual CPU in this case. Uh, virtual, uh, mostly the I.O. is completely virtual as far as DOM U is concerned. I'll show a slide uh, how the whole architecture fits in. And we used Linux 3.4. That was the version uh, that was released with the device. And it was running, and it still runs, uh, Android Jelly Bean 4.2. And we used Zen 4.2 as the base, and uh, we went on to develop all the extension support. And uh, I'll not go into details of the real virtualization extension support. I think we have other presentations, which will, I think, go into detail. 
And as you see, the virtual extensions, uh, basically the ARM provides the virtual gig for the interrupts management, a two-stage uh, translation page table so that the memory is clearly segregated and there's isolation of memory uh, within the guests. And we have a new generic timer interface for the hypervisor timer, and we had to support uh, virtualization uh, for the Neon uh, SMD support. And uh, this device uh, has IO MMU, but it was not uh, completely supporting uh, second stage translations. So we had to use the intermediate physical address, which is the second stage translation address as a physical address. So that was basically the work which we did. I'm not going to detail of that work. Uh, my focus is mostly on the GPU part. And this development was done uh, in collaboration with the Samsung HQ in, in, in Korea. So as you see uh, the configuration, the DOM0 kernel has been assigned 1 GB of RAM, DOM U 1 GB, and the Zen is fully SMP aware, supports full SMP. DOM0 was also supporting uh, SMP. And the demo which we have uh, supports single core DOM U, but we have made lots of changes and the DOM U now supports uh, multi-core as well. The main difference uh, which I would like to emphasize here is that DOM0 kernel, all the IU devices are passed through and the DOMU kernel uh, uses the PV drivers. So uh, this is the uh, whole uh, uh, configuration of the device. So this is the block diagram which I was uh, uh, talking about. So we call this PVH. I'm not sure how uh, relevant it is. So the para virtualization is for the IO part, and the full virtualization support is for the CPU and memory. So if you uh, see the block diagram, uh, the DOM0 kernel is on the left. The ARM's different execution modes uh, are, uh, there's a new hype mode where the, the hypervisor runs. And we have the kernels running in PL1 mode and all the user land runs. Uh, the good thing about virtualization extension is all the user land run without any changes. So there are unmodified guests. Uh, the changes that happen is for IO devices, that's for para virtualization. The CPU part of the kernel doesn't change at all. The memory management doesn't change. So if you see the IO devices, the Mali, touch display, everything is para-virtualized. And we have uh, the virtual CPUs running on Zen. So this is the basic architecture of the whole system. So uh, what are the challenges? I mean, the challenges for virtualization uh, for a mobile device is primarily the I.O. For a virtualization on a server, basically you handle the block drivers and network drivers. Uh, the workloads are different. So basically, you focus on those two types, types of I.O. But for a mobile device, tablets as well, uh, we have uh, tens of uh, I.O. devices. We have lots of sensors. We have media display camera. We have uh, connectivity. So all these drivers, you can emulate and trap them and put them completely uh, in the hypervisor. But will it be feasible? Will it be practical? The testing time, the development time would be uh, enormous. So the easiest solution and the best solution which Zen provides is para virtualization, where the devices, the native devices, still remain unchanged, running DOM0, and the virtual drivers use the para virtualization bit. So a brief, uh, so I'll be showing a video. Before that, a brief, uh, a brief uh, synopsis. So we have this. Uh, so there's an, something called arbitration engine which we develop. The arbitration engine basically what it does is. Uh, at a time, only one uh, OS will be uh, visible to the user. So this is a foreground domain, which we call. So all the human interface uh, parts, the display, the camera, the touch, everything, would be assigned to one particular OS, one particular uh, foreground domain. So the arbitration engine keeps track of which is the foreground domain and just uh, manages the IO devices and assigns a particular uh, device to a particular OS. So we have a display switch, uh, which could be a, a simple app which uh, which we have developed, or it could be a physical button which can trigger uh, a change in the domain. So before I show the video, uh, so that it's quite clear what you see, uh, the DOM0, the main Android, uh, would be of blue wallpaper, and DOM U will be of orange wallpaper. And we will be switching between the two domains using the icon and also using volume button. We have annotated the video so you can clearly see. So basically what we are showing is uh, a light white game, Angry Birds, running in both the domains. And uh, it's, I mean, with PV drivers, the performance is nearly native. And we'll also run Angry Birds simultaneously to show that the GPU is fully loaded 
and the performance is not degraded, though you use GPU in both the domains. And we have industry reference 3D benchmark, uh, which we'll show and show the performance as well. This is DOMU, the virtual Android, completely virtual uh, GPU. If you see the transitions, they're as good as DOM0. So this is Angry Birds running nearly at the native performance, which is 60 FPS. So we switched to DOM0 using the volume button uh, as a physical button. And we run the Angry Birds here as well, concurrently. to DOM U now. Angry Birds still running, the performance is still uh, native. So both the domains are running concurrently. We stopped uh, Angry Birds on DOM, DOM 0 now. Switch to DOM U. And this is the industry standard GL benchmark. So the performance is around 35 frames per second because the amount of GL calls that go through are immense, immensely huge. But still, uh, you can't perceive the, uh, the difference actually. The frame rate is quite good. So DOM0 is still running, it's rendering. DOM is still running the benchmark. So this is the video which I want to show. If you see the performance is quite good. So what are the challenges that we faced uh, in getting this solution running? See, the Android Jelly Bean as an OS has introduced lots of changes to get a battery smooth performance. So it has introduced uh, a triple buffering and has changed the memory allocation schemes. It has, changed, it has introduced new memory allocators. Uh, FB dev has, was removed. They introduced new sync mechanisms so that the buffers are in sync across all the compositors. And they introduced hardware composition to reduce the burden on the GPU. So essentially, what's happened is uh, uh, everything has been closely integrated. It's no more just limited to one subsystem of the whole, uh, whole OS. Uh, it's a combination of all those things. So to get a, the best performance in a virtual GPU, we did not change anything in the user land part. The, only the kernel subsystems, like ion uh, allocator, fence, and display drivers, these are the main kernel subsystems which were para-virtualized, and the data moves to DOM0 to the native drivers, and then gets uh, displayed or goes to the GPU. So we basically did the para-virtualization of ion, fence, and other things using grant memory and event channels. So we, uh, the basic challenge here is to get near native performance, which is 60 frames per second. So as you see, the GPU first renders into a surface. It composites and creates a frame, and the frame has to travel back again to DOM U, and then it goes to the virtual display and then comes back to DOM0 and finally gets rendered onto the, the real display screen. So the approach which we took uh, is called API remoting. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why we uh, took this approach. Uh, as an OEM, Samsung uh, works with different chipset vendors. Uh, we have different graphics vendors like NVIDIA, Qualcomm has its own, Imagination, Mali. So all these silicon vendors have different drivers. 
Now, if we start para virtualizing these drivers, the amount of uh, uh, workload would be immense, which we wanted to avoid. So uh, we came up with a different approach. It's called API remoting, where uh, we take the GLES uh, OpenGL ES APIs and we uh, we do remoting. So all the work is done in the user land, and none of the drivers are changed. But still, the performance has been uh, quite good. So the Android's Jelly Beans butter smooth technology, which is triple buffering, uh, vSync interrupts. So, so if you see the vSync interrupt, it's a virtual interrupt in DOMU. So we use Zen event channel. Uh, and when we run a benchmark, the amount of uh, uh, events that pass through are immense. So the event channel is quite stressed. So we had to do some optimizations to make sure that we don't miss vSync interrupts and the performance does not deteriorate. So if you see in this example, in this example, uh, the diagram shows uh, how the fences. Uh, so this is uh, the basic launcher when launcher runs. If you see the fence mechanisms, there are each fence is allocated to a buff buffer, and we have to make sure that all the fences are uh, weighted upon and released at the proper time so that we don't lose any any frames. So the basic challenge was to optimize this part so that we don't miss any frames. So these are, these are the results uh, of uh, all the uh, apps that we uh, that use graphics uh, GPU. If you see the DOM zero and DOM use performance for uh, real world use cases like launcher, gallery, Angry Birds, Gears, the performance of DOM zero and DOM U has been uh, quite similar, almost 60 FPS. And if you see the the packets per second that goes that go between DOM zero and DOM U for the number of API calls that get remoted. As the benchmarks become more and more intensive, the event channel gets stressed and the performance comes down. So that's basically on, the, on, on all the apps which use uh, the GLES APIs a lot. But still, the performance for the real world use cases is quite, uh, quite good. So this, uh, tells, this diagram shows the event channels, uh, the inter-domain events for vSync interrupt. Which, which fires every 16.6 milliseconds. If you see, uh, when the stress is very high, we lose some events, which makes us uh, lose some packets, uh, bringing down the performance. So Xen for mobile, so what are the things that we changed? Uh, we had to change the multi-page ring uh, to ensure low latencies. And we found with non lyric grants, and we fixed that. And as I said, the per VM interrupts are quite unreliable when they're stressed. So we had to uh, reduce the scheduling latencies uh, in some cases and do a shed yield so that we don't uh, miss any of the interrupts. And we have been contributing, and idea is to contribute. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, we would like to contribute some of the code, uh, at least the kernel part and the hypervisor part. The user land is, again, a little bit proprietary uh, because a lot of work has gone into it. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is, yes, it's definitely possible to take a, a, a server class hypervisor like Zen, and with the right changes in the I.O. drivers, definitely it's possible to run full-fledged mobile operating systems to a decent level of performance. So Zen runs well on uh, mobile devices, and using PV drivers, I think it's definitely it's possible. No major changes are required in Zen architecture. So yes, I've taken 20 minutes. So that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions and answers, I can take them. Yes, the question is, when would we release the patches? Uh, the idea is, yes, definitely we we'll, would like to. It's a work in progress. In next couple of, uh, I think, months, we are trying to push the patches. This is only for the kernel part. Uh, the GLES API remoting, which we did in the user land, I think uh, it's, again, proprietary, which does not uh, come into the GPL license. So that will not be released. But the rest of the I.O. devices that we have para virtualized, yes, definitely we'll, we'll push them. The idea is to push as soon as possible. We don't have any time frame, unfortunately, because we, we follow a different process uh, for pushing the patches. Please go ahead. Pardon? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, this is basically an R&D project that we did. Commercialization is, uh, there are lots of other challenges. The power management, for example, uh, it's one of the main critical issues that's still being looked into. So uh, still in advanced R&D stage. 
commercialization is not yet uh, HD. Yes, please go ahead. Fifty-four twenty, not yet. Not yet. Yes, uh, big little. Uh, yes, virtual. The work is going on that, but the problem there is uh, the use case uh, changes there because we have eight cores, four plus four. Uh, you can pin some CPUs. You can do lots of uh, mix and match. So yes, definitely work is going on there, but exactly what is going on is still not. Uh, what can be achieved? It's not still not clear. Please go ahead. Yes, definitely. Definitely not just the frame buffer, the buffers. Uh, any, any memory uh, of a particular domain is isolated. So the idea is to keep them isolated. So if a buffer belongs to a particular, mem uh, particular domain, uh, the IOMMU makes sure that it sits to the same domain. So the idea is not to share the memory. Even if a particular frame is displayed on the display, it's, the display is independent. Uh, it might not interfere with other domains operating system and its memory. Yeah. yeah. Please go ahead. Have you tried more than two uh, Yes. So uh, the idea, uh, yes. The question is, have we tried more than two domains? Uh, not on this product. So we are planning to have uh, DOM0, which is an uh, independent driver domain, and run uh, VM0 and VM1, which are DOM0 and DOM1 independently. Yeah. Yes, that's a work. Yes, yes. So the question is the power management, how, is, how will it be dealt with? So power management is uh, a system-wide solution. So earlier, each OS used to take care of power management on its own. Now the work has to be uh, delegated to hypervisor as well. So we'll have to introduce new set of hyper calls. For example, the frequency scaling and the low power modes. For each vCPU, they're going to be different. So we'll have to introduce new hyper calls so that there is a, a, a clear interaction between the OS and the hypervisor, and the system-wide decision is taken. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, invection. Yes, Kirpin, go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I could not get the question completely, to be honest. So I'm not sure about uh, other products. Uh, can you please uh, clarify the question? Firefox. Uh, no, I'm not sure about that. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Storage. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> I think we are still in the research stage, so we are not sure how to address those real cases. OK, thanks a lot. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just last question. Yeah, just last question.